What's up, everybody? Yeah. Welcome to Move the Sticks, presented by Griffles Plasma Donation Centers. And Buck, man, it's uh, it's been a long weekend. I'm not gonna lie; it, it was a painful weekend at the Jeremiah household. I know it was a celebratory uh, weekend uh, for you. You're out traveling, doing a game. You got a lot going on, but man, we <laughs> I didn't. We're gonna get we're we're well, gonna get to that one. We're gonna get to that one in just a second. But I do want to tell everybody this is NFL kickoff week, so we're not gonna get too stuck on college football. We're gonna. Talk about some of the big college football games. We're going to get to the big Thursday night game. Rams, Bills, uh, have some fun with that one. Uh, and then you've uh, you've got an awesome article up on impact rookies in each division, which we're going to hit on that uh, as we go through the show. But, I mean, we have to start. we got to start. App State, North Carolina. We previewed it. We spent a whole show previewing this game. And I know there were some listeners, and you know who you are. You were like, wow, what is this? We don't care about this game. And lo and behold, what was the game of the weekend, Buck? The MTS <laughs> Classic. The MTS what was your moment about the game. I didn't have an opportunity to really the game because one, I was coaching the Little League football game at the same time. So I'm tracking the game on my phone. And then I'm in the car driving to the airport and I'm listening to it on the radio. Now, the troubling part for me, the radio team was the Appalachian State team that was broadcasting. So everything was from that vantage point. So I'm going, I'm listening. I, I get out the car, like Carolina's down, then they're up, then they're up kind of big. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, just smooth selling. Then it goes away to commercial because they're doing like this scoreboard report. So it's not just all <laughs> App State, Carolina. So then the game is tied. So now I'm like driving to the airport trying to figure out like, well, what is going on? So Carolina goes up. They then, App State goes down the field. I hear about the fourth and 11 penalty The app state people are going nuts because they scored a touchdown and they're like, you got to go for two, go for two. So then I'm like, what is going on? And you can hear the disappointment in the voice because they're describing the play. They're like, he's wide open. Oh my gosh. He fell down. <laughs> he didn't get it. So DJ, at that point, the game is 56, 55. Yeah. The radio station cuts away from the game oh, no. so it's 31 seconds left and it's like that kick and so i'm like well i mean they didn't come back to him so i i guess carolina got the onside kick and that is it so i call my dad and my dad is upset fussing or whatever i'm like what's going on he was like what well, the dog maybe take the dog out so i didn't see the end of the game dj i see the final score and i'm like <laughs> what happened what did i miss so i don't know Carolina one is great, but I have no idea what happened the last the last couple minutes. You want to know what's so great about you telling that story is let me you just set the picture for where your day was. OK, so we moved, as you know, we were left in the Temecula area. We moved back down to San Diego. Uh, so my daughter uh, had a nail appointment and needed to go uh, to the chiropractor. <laughs> up, up, but we had the appointments already scheduled up in Temecula. OK, so. I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I, I'll, I'll take her up there. So I'll just listen to the game on the radio on the way up there. Well, you must have been listening to like serious, uh, like 80, where they bounce around to yes. different games, I'm guessing. Yeah, college, so college I, football was on ESPN or whatever. I found the broadcast of the game, but it was the Carolina broadcast. So you're, li <laughs> you're listening to the App State broadcast. I'm suffering listening to your arrogant North Carolina broadcast about how Every penalty that's ever been called is egregious, and they're being held on every play, the whole yeah. thing. And it was, it, but all college broadcasts are Homer broadcasts. I think that's kind of a lesson. But anyways, I got to listen to your Homer broadcast. So I get in the car. First of all, there's a text chain with all these guys. You know all the guys that work on the draft. Yeah. Um, so, Buck, I, I, can't, I can't learn my lesson. It's 21 to 7, right? So I watched that part of the game that I'm going to go pick up my daughter. She had a thing at school that we're going to drive up to Temecula. 21 to 7, I type in there, butt kicking. Like, oh, we're, I, I literally said, oh, we're, my God. I said, Buck, I said, I'm we're fixing to run. I wasn't on that chain. I, I know. I said, we're fixing to run them out the gym. We're going to run them <laughs> out the gym. And then, oh and, the, and then I get in my car. No lie. I get in my car up 14. When I take her to the nail appointment and drop her off, we're down 21. I was like, that was one heck of a drive. It would just completely collapse. So anyways, I'm, so we do that. So then I'm sitting in like a, a, a Rubio's like while she's doing her thing. I'm just watching the game on my phone. 
and you know, the gosh, Carolina looked, the quarterback looks amazing. Like he's a good player. Um, yeah. and I'm like, Oh, this is ridiculous. I, I just need to turn this off. So they're down big. All of a sudden they start coming back. We're at the chiropractor at this point in time. So they start coming back. And so I'm in literally in the chiropractor's office. Like I got to turn this game on. And so th the wildness ensues. Well, then they don't get the two point and I'm watching the TV copy and look, I've, I've, you call games. I call games. I know there's going to be things that I'm sure there's a million things that we've missed calling games and mistakes that we've made, but Buck, I'm watching this TV, TV copy. And they're going for the onside kick. And the guy catches it. And I'm going, oh man. Then I see him run. I'm like, oh, let him go. Let him go. Like, let don't don't tackle him. This, 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 this guy's actually gonna score and extend the game. Like, what is he doing? And then the app state, app state's running after him. I'm like, what are you no, don't you tackle him at the two yard line? The game's over. Let this dude score. The broadcast never mentions one word about how dumb that was to not fall down with the ball never mentions the word they're showing replays look at how they annihilated those guys on the front line i'm like you guys are missing the boat anyways they go to kick the pat and the guy goes, this is a pat is going to make it a two-score game and i'm looking i'm like i went to app state but one two three four five anyway, <laughs> this is gonna make it a, this is an eight point game like they're still alive and carolina got a 15 yard penalty so they're gonna have to kick i'm like there's so many things wrong here and they pointed out none of them i was like how are they missing this anyways so then they get it. They run the same two point play. I also saw criticism of that, which I was laughing because, like, if you were watching a Nebraska game, right, in the 90s, mm -hmm. and they, that would be like saying, oh, Nebraska ran the triple option two plays in a row. Like, that's what those offenses are. It's literally a zone read. So that's option one. Quarterback can keep it, option two. And the guy in the flat is and option three. Flip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd run, you can run that play 10 times in a row. I don't care. You got three different plays within one play. And they're, I was like, you really criticizing that? Like it was. Anyways, I was frustrated well, with the uh, broadcast. So, so the fun thing. So, one about the broadcast. So, it wasn't the normal broadcasters on the broadcast. So, it was Jones Angels, who's the normal play-by-play -play guy, but the guy who was on the color is a guy named Joey Yock. Joey okay. Yock was a receiver that played beside me when I played. Oh, he was good. He was screaming. He's, he was all over his play-by-play -play guy. He, he was, was jumping he was, all over. So him. he's. So he's two years older than me. His dad is a famous coach in the CFL and all that. And so he was living in that because I heard, had a chance to hear him, but I didn't know who was on the call. Because Brian Hold Simmons up. is, is that, normally... Is he related to Jim Yock? Is he related to Jim Yock? Oh, yeah, that's his brother. That's oh, his younger brother. I did brother. not know that. I got to text Jim and tell him I, I got to give him crap about yeah, that. I didn't realize his brother. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's Jim's younger brother. So... I'm, I'm like, who's on the call? Like, I, who is this? This is not Brian Simmons. Like, who, who is this? Because he's saying, oh, don't go, don't go for it. Don't go for it. He's doing all these things. I was like, what, what are we talking about? We're trying to put the game away. Like, yes, you go for two. Like, this, yeah. this is what you do and, and, and all of this stuff. And so I don't know who's on the app state call, but yeah. the color guy was just like, oh, my God. We emotional. Just this thing and it's the, uh, emotional. Very emotional. It's very, it's very, it's very emotional. The, the ebbs and flows, and it's a mountaineer oh, day. And so, so then I'm trying to figure out what happened on fourth and eleven on the penalty, right? Because App State, the penalty comes up. Yes, yes. Yeah. First, I'm it was, like, it was, it was a very was, questionable. It was, it was, it was, it was a questionable call. I'll leave, I'll leave that one. Alone. <laughs> that was a questionable call. I give you that one. The questionable. But the bigger lesson that I've learned, not only the App State game, but in college football and all these things. DJ, more games are lost than won. Yeah. Like, if you can just teach your team to not give the game away, you'll win games. Because I'm watching the App State Carolina game. I watched the Notre Dame, LSU, I mean, no, LSU, Florida State. Yeah. Florida State is down there, and you're like, Greg McElroy is like, let them score. But then the defense for me is like, no, as long as you got to play, you got a chance. And then they run the toss sweep, and he puts it on the ground. And you're just like, you know what? Why, why, of, of all plays, by the way, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, college football is so great because it, you're living and dying on 18 to 22-year-olds, and you just don't know what is going to happen. It's yeah. unbelievable. Just an unbelievable weekend. Yeah, let's get to some of these other games here quickly. I mean, I, I think I even said it on here. I thought, you know what, Oregon, they've really recruited well on the offense and defensive line, and, and Georgia lost all those dudes, mm -hmm. but – Two, a couple points on that. Number one, I think you, we, we talked about it last year. You could arguably Georgia's top two or three players came back. And fully understanding they had the number one pick in the draft, five first rounders. Jalen Carter is a freak show. Um, now you're seeing the abundance of tight ends, not just Bowers. You got Washington. They've got so Holy many dudes, smokes. Buck. They're, they're everywhere. Who is number zero? 
Oh, like, I know. He's enormous. Big, I mean, my gosh. Like, I'm li- – DJ, it's almost like watching high school football down here in California, right? So you yeah. look at all the little neighborhood teams. You're like, oh, look at this cute, cute little <laughs> high school teams. And then I happen to catch Mata Day and, and Corona Centennial, or I see yeah. St. John's Bosco and Bishop Amat, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a different – like, that doesn't that's even look like that. Like, I don't know. a different sport. Looking at Alabama and Georgia, it's like, oh, look at all the little cute college football teams. And then you see them, and you're yeah. like, look at those monsters. Yeah. Just no, and, and just bullying different. them, just bullying them. But you know what I was thinking about, it, and it's a, it's a, it's an interesting lesson, and I, I guess probably goes to some of those top high school teams as well. Um, and, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this as a, as a head coach, high school head coach. I feel like the time of, you know, you got your starters and they're going to play the whole game, and then some, you know, in high school, some of those kids are going to go both ways, and then you got some of your backups like. And, and these colleges, and I think somebody said it after the USC game against mm-hmm. Rice that that they did a much better job of rolling guys through. Like with the transfer portal and keeping players engaged, Mac Brown talked about it when we talked to him last week, Buck. You've got to play yeah. a lot of dudes. You got to roll them through. Like, and I, I think Georgia is, you know, remember last year we would talk about, oh, this, you know, they don't have this, this, this player doesn't have that many sacks or this player doesn't have that many. And I'm like, yeah, they're they're playing. 30 guys on defense like they're rolling all these guys through and what happens is there's no drop off from year to year because you always have experienced guys on the field that is the number one thing like the days of the iron men where guys are playing yeah. all the snaps you can't silly do that. Yeah. and you know it's funny i don't know if you remember this but you remember when chip kelly was at oregon and they yeah. would do the hockey line shifts they literally would mm-hmm. sub out their entire defense and the second team would run on like this is when mm-hmm. chip kelly had oregon rolling he was yeah. kind of at the front end of that movement saying that, oh, no, you got to play a bunch of guys, not only to keep guys fresh, but to develop the experience and build the depth behind your team. You're now seeing that that is such a wise strategy because Georgia rolls out. And look, I know it's only one game, but I'm looking at them like they might be better than the team they had last year. Yeah. Like, Offensively, for sure. It's, it, it's ridiculous. The amount of talent that they have. And Stetson Bennis was throwing it all over the yard. They were doing whatever they wanted to do offensively. Defensively, they just have monsters all over the field. And I mean, I love college football, but when you look at Georgia, you just like, man, you just have to have a different team. Maybe you can catch them on a bad day, but it's not only the talent, it's the depth of talent. Yeah. Like they've stacked them on top of one another that I like the little engine that could strategies. But if you don't have like <laughs> a collection yeah. of talent to go with them over time, over the course of a 60 minute game, they just wear you down. Yeah. But think about like, you know, there's years and go back where it'd be like, oh man, if this guy gets hurt, you know, this receiver goes down, this running back goes down, this, this defensive lineman goes down. Like they, they, you, you don't even know that they're not there because they're rolling so many guys through and they're all so talented and they're all getting experience and you're keeping them from transferring. Like it's just a, it's a different it's a different deal man they're just collecting collecting talent and they're using them um anyway i thought that was an interesting takeaway there um florida quarterback had to be one of the biggest stories of the weekend that's a bad dude man so dj so it's, it's always funny because you know our guy friend of the program bruce feldman does a great job of keeping up with like generation next who's next who's yeah. on the freak list or whatever and so comment that you find a wide receiver on that list but lo and behold anthony richardson is there and so Bruce talks about him talking about being a rare athlete. So we'll just put this out there. Just as a scout, if you close your eyes and I read off these numbers, he automatically goes to the top of the charts. 6'4", 238 pounds with only 10% body fat. Runs a 4'4", and they say he can throw a football 75 yards. He power cleans 325 pounds and he squats <laughs> 500. So DJ, just on that alone, just on those numbers alone, you're already intrigued and in, in saying, oh, well, we have to do it. But then when you watch him play and you see the the plays that he's making with his arm and his feet and how strong he is and, and all of this superhero stuff that he's doing, now you're like, oh, this is a problem. He is going to be a problem for people because he's big, fast, and physical. He can throw it out the stadium, and he appears to know how to play the position oh, we might have to add another player to the mix when we talk about some of these top quarterbacks. And so it was exciting to watch him play. He put on a show. He dazzled down in the swamp. Um, I think he certainly put the rest of the uh, 
draft world on notice mm -hmm. that uh, there are a couple more guys in this mix that we have to talk about. Yeah, I mean, look, Bryce Young was incredible, but I mean, we've talked about that one. I've I've said it. I've look. He, he's he's Aaron Rodgers. If he left him in the dryer too long, that was my comp for Bryce Young. He's an unbelievable player. <laughs> but you know how it is when you get into the spring and you see that dude next to Bryce. Like those are two different dynamics, and and you have in your head Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. And even though Mahomes isn't tall, he's a he's a big, strong dude. Like this is this is a different. You know, it's just going to look a little bit different when you when you see that. So. Um, that's going to be a fascinating evaluation as we work towards draft season. Real quick, Buck, before we uh, we take a quick break here, Ohio State, Notre Dame, kind of a slog. I, I, I thought, you know, we might see a little more explosiveness. I thought Ohio State was kind of almost mm -hmm. content to say, okay, we'll just kind of grind through this and, uh, and, and get out of here with the win. Notre Dame, uh, Coach Freeman, they had those guys ready to play. They were, they were physical. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, you know, just kind of one of those games just kind of they hung in there. But Ohio State, you felt like, was the better football team. Yeah, you felt like we was a better football team. I think we were surprised, though, because you expected Ohio State's offense to pick up where they left off the last yeah. time we saw them, where they were throwing the ball all over the yard. And um, it, was an, it was an explosion. We didn't see that. I thought C.J. Stroud played. It was solid. I thought it was a solid overall performance in, in those things. But it wasn't what we anticipated in terms of it's like the bright lights and the fireworks that we have seen from this offense in the past. I'm sure they eventually get to that. But in this game, you just didn't see it. So... I guess it left you wanting more. And then when you think about his play and you watch Richardson and those guys light it up, he just kind of goes to the back pages because it wasn't one of those eight-level performances that we're accustomed to seeing from C.J. Stroud. Yep. You know, we'll see. He's got a lot, a lot of time left, a lot of year left. See if he can put together some big games. I'm sure he will with all the weapons he's got. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to look forward to this Thursday night game, Bills and Rams. And because we always focus on the draft, we're going to draft these guys. We'll take both those rosters, put them in a pool, and we're going to pick each come away with five players and, uh, and see what it looks like. We'll be back right after this.